This video is sponsored by G Portal. Today, we'll be talking about your single player or multiplayer settings and how to adjust them to give you the experience you want in ARK. We'll be going over three rate configurations to accommodate all types of players, along with thorough explanations of what the settings are actually doing to your game, so you can adjust them confidently. I'll also show you how to set up a server with G Portal so you can easily play with friends and family, which means we have a lot to cover in this video. Please check the timestamps in the description if you're looking for something specific. First, I want to organize the settings into five categories to help us understand them. We have gameplay settings, world settings, structure settings, character settings, and dino settings. I'll explain each section as we go, so let's go ahead and begin with configuration one. So the first configuration is what I use for my community servers, and I find that it works out for most ARC players out there. The first category on the list is gameplay settings, so let's start with difficulty. Difficulty dictates the max level that wild creatures can be. Unfortunately, single player's difficulty slider is useless and doesn't actually change anything in the game, which we'll talk about in a second, but G Portal offers much more control and gives you both pieces of the difficulty puzzle. It allows you to change both difficulty offset and official difficulty. Difficulty offset is super confusing, so no matter where you're playing, just set that to one unless you know exactly what you're doing. I keep my official difficulty at five to give players a max wild creature level of 150. There's a simple way to find the max level of wild creatures based on difficulty. Just multiply the official difficulty by 30. Ours is set to five, so five times 30 equals 150. You'll most commonly see official difficulty referred to simply as difficulty. To change this in single player, please don't use the slider. Open the console in game and type override official difficulty equals five. All one word, no spaces, followed by destroy wild dinos. This command combo removes the low level creatures and replaces them with new creatures up to level 150. Next, let's talk about XP. The XP multiplier dictates how much XP will be awarded to players, tribes, and dinos overall. You can refine this a bit in single player and G portal by awarding more XP for kills, harvesting, and more, but I find that keeping those individual XP boosts at one and adjusting the overall XP multiplier works really well, which for our servers is set to three. By the way, if you don't know what a setting does, hover over it in single player for an explanation. G Portal goes one step further and lists the description right underneath the setting itself. There's one mysterious setting that we have to go over quickly. Enable single player settings. What does it change? Well, it changes a lot actually. And I wasn't sure what it was, so I went over to the ARC wiki to find out precisely what it changes and it gives beginners and single players a slightly faster experience to compensate for the lack of tribe mates. Mainly though, it changes how quickly beer ferments or how fast you can compost. I actually recommend turning that off and adjust your settings manually, so there aren't any surprises in game, but ultimately that's up to you. Anyway, we've covered gameplay settings for the first configuration, so let's move on to world settings. The first thing we need to look at is the harvest amount multiplier. Basically, it dictates how much of a resource you'll get per swing. The higher it is, the more resources you'll get. I keep mine on three since I accommodate various types of players, but adjust this if you feel like the game is too grindy or not grindy enough. I don't recommend changing harvest health or harvest damage because you can really mess with ARC's already unstable stability. But in a nutshell, they dictate how long it takes to fully harvest a resource node. G Portal gets pretty thorough here and lets you adjust how frequently resources respawn, how long it takes for items and corpses to decompose, crop growth settings, and even the quality of supply crates, although I usually keep those at their default values since they're pretty balanced. What's most important to me here though is the day and night cycle settings. Basically, if you don't like nights in ARC, you can increase the nighttime speed scale to turn nights off completely. You could do the same for daytime if you want a challenge, but for my servers, the default day and night cycle seems to work best. Let's look at some structure settings. So right off the bat, there's a lot here. Do you want to be able to build on the point where supply crates drop? Do you want those crates to land on top of your building or clip inside your structure? When building in a cave, do you want to be able to clip inside the cave walls or prevent building in caves at all? What about platform saddles? Where's the limitations to those builds? All of that and more is controlled in your structure settings. Depending on your game mode and how you want to play, these settings will change a lot about what you can do, so it's really important to read them carefully. 
Most of these settings are fine to keep at their default value since the arc devs did a pretty good job at balancing things like structure decay and max turrets in an area, but like I said, it changes a lot about the gameplay, so make sure you're going over them. Personally, I've made sure to allow crate spawns on top of structures, I've enabled automatic structure destruction to keep server lag to a minimum, and I've allowed structure placement collision. Remember that you don't really have to worry about structure decay in single player since all of the structures there are yours. Additionally, some of the building requirements in ARC really frustrate me and allowing structure collision removes a lot of those limitations. It can be a little OP for PVP though, so carefully consider your options here. Hey, are you still with me? Good, now that I've got your attention again, hit the like button, moving on. Next up for configuration one, we have character settings. There's a lot here, but most values can be set to the default settings like player damage multiplier and player character health recovery multiplier. Wow, that's a mouthful. Anyway, if you host an event like the Architects did with their summer bash event, you can set food and water drain multipliers to zero so nobody has to worry about dehydration or starvation. In a normal situation, I'd keep those on default, and I do for my servers. There are some things I do want to make sure are active though, like use corpse locator so that that green beam appears over your dead body to help you find it, and show map player location so you have an easier time understanding where you are on the map. Here's where you disable diseases, enable friendly fire, allow creative mode, and set tribe settings like maximum number of players in a tribe or max tribes per alliance. I have disabled a limit to tribes since I recently switched my servers over to PVE, but this is something you want to think about if you're hosting for the public or for your own community. You can also adjust some individual PVP settings here like respawn interval after death from an enemy player or dino. Again, a majority of these settings can be set to default for a balanced experience. I have everything here on default settings, except for the green switches you see. Last up for configuration one, we have dino settings. These are arguably some of the most important settings to get right since dinos are the key to success in ARC. It's really easy to make them too OP or too underpowered, so let's see what I've done to give my players a balanced experience. First, I've set my taming speed multiplier to three, which is three times higher than the default taming speed, than the default default. First, I've set my taming speed multiplier to three, which is three times higher than the default taming speed. It's fast, yeah, but not too fast. Also, not too slow. Next, I've increased anything that has to do with breeding by 75%, meaning that breeding dinos is 75% faster than on official servers. I've reduced the time it takes for dinos to mate down to 0.25, and I've increased how fast their eggs hatch up to 1.75. Babies mature and can be imprinted on 75% faster as well, for a value of 1.75. On G Portal servers specifically, I had to enable Allow Flyer Carry to allow players to carry creatures with RGs and other carrier dinos. And I also had to enable Force Can Ride Flyers to allow players to fly creatures at all. These are enabled on official servers, so you won't see them on the info cards, but just remember that you have to explicitly enable them on G Portal. For Genesis Part 1 and Aberration, you want to make sure that flyers are disabled since these maps aren't designed to allow them. Other than that, everything is set to default. You may have noticed we didn't talk about character or dino stats. That's because G Portal has them sectioned off in engine settings, likely due to how the game is built. From here though, it's very straightforward to adjust and even less complicated in single player because the sliders actually work. For your player stats, you'll just want to copy over the settings listed on this card. Increase fortitude to 1.5, increase weight to 1.5, movement speed to 1.2, and crafting speed to 1.5. So here, weight would normally give you an extra 10 pounds per level, but now that it's increased to 1.5, it'll give you 15 per level. As far as dino stats are concerned, you're looking to increase the stats of tamed dinos. You do get a few options in single player and G portal, so just make sure you're adjusting for tamed dinos unless you want wild dinos to also be buffed. Anyway, let's increase their weight to 1.5. I find that adjusting too many stats on creatures generally makes them too overpowered, so change these stats at your own risk. A little boost to weight adds a bit of convenience to your life, so it's really not that big of a deal. Don't worry about breaking the game or anything. Here's a card that highlights everything we went over for configuration one. 
I do have two more configurations for you, but I want you to note that any settings that aren't listed on these cards will reflect the default official settings, which you can find by clicking on the second link in the description. Let's talk about the second configuration, which is a lot closer to default official settings. So I just want to point out that this card's settings portion explicitly shows the default official settings. Technically, it doesn't need to be there, but since things changed from the first card, I want to make sure you see the difference. As far as rates are concerned, we're only giving a 2x multiplier to XP, Gathering, and Taming. Anything having to do with mating has a 50% boost, so this one is definitely slower than the first configuration, but still really balanced. I recommend this setting configuration for experienced players that really enjoy grinding through the game. Before we move on to the final configuration, I want to show you how to set up a PC or PS4 server with Gportal and how you can save 5% on your order. Let's start by clicking the first link in the description. From here, just scroll down until you see Arc. You can either pick PS4 or PC, but since I play on PC, I'm picking it for this video, but they're set up exactly the same, so don't worry if you're on PS4. Anyway, now you can pick how many slots you want and where the server is hosted. Slots are equivalent to number of players, so since most people don't have more than 10 friends who also play ARK, I recommend getting the 10 slot server for 30 days. From there, just pick the city that's closest to you and click order now. You have another opportunity to adjust the server size and location, so adjust it if needed and click continue. Simply create an account and set up your payment method. Once your payment has gone through, click activate now. Then click on Go to Game Server Configuration. On the left-hand panel, click on Basic Settings. Here's where you'll adjust everything we've gone over and more. You do have a few administrator options like setting a password or enabling multiple servers to be clustered together. Carefully read through them, and if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. Once you've got everything the way you want it, start the server and search for it in Arc's server menu. Sometimes it does take a few minutes for the server to populate, so if you're struggling, try restarting your game and waiting a bit. And that's pretty much all there is to setting up a server with Gportal. Let's talk about Configuration 3. Configuration 3 is just straight up easy mode. I recommend this configuration to players who find Arc too difficult and grindy. We've increased the max wild dino level from 150 to 300, making the game significantly easier as soon as you get your hands on some creatures. Additionally, we've boosted fortitude, weight, movement and crafting speed, health, and melee damage. The real money maker here is the dino health and melee damage. Those boosts will make your dinos very powerful, making bosses and general gameplay a breeze. Not only that, but XP, gathering, and taming are boosted to 5x, making the grind pretty much non-existent. Remember that you can do anything you want with these settings, so feel free to experiment. So if you're looking to improve an arc, check out this video right here that goes over the 10 things I'd talk to you about if we were chatting face to face. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers and didn't pickle the peppers, did Peter Piper pick any peppers at all?